and welcome to another edition of Project NASA. Uh, this is Black Lives Marx. This is part four. Joining me in this discussion is Martin Costello. But before we get started, please show your support for freedom of speech by hitting that subscribe button. I get heavily censored by the lefties and taken out of suggested videos. Welcome back, Martin. Thanks again for the uh, taking the time out to join me. Gosh, thank you, David. It's been a hell of a week, hasn't it? There's been so much going on, but thank you for having me again. It's always a pleasure. Well, thanks again. Listen, so we want to talk about what happened to you. So we see a video of you on um, on YouTube. Um, I believe you you in Swindon Town Centre, mm. and you know you, you've stopped off at a Black Lives Matter protest. Mm. And you've seen all, all sorts of things, um, like Karl Marx books, um, the police yeah. coming in, intercepted and got a bit rough, a bit, bit heavy-handed with you. Um, tell us, Maya, what, what happened? So go from the top, start from the beginning. When you arrived, what did you see? Well, it was um, it was um, an interesting day. Um, I heard literally the day before that um, Black Lives Matter hold a, a protest um, in my hometown, my glory hometown, Swindon. So I thought, well, you know, I've heard a lot of things about Black Lives Matter. We've heard lots of um, odd um, political motivations behind it, such as Marxism and thing. But I thought, no, let's have a look. They've aren't, they've they've had an event locally. Um, I want to go down and see what their views are. Um, so we turned up, um, yeah, just before the um, before the event started. And the first thing that struck me is quite odd, actually, um, was there's a table there, the old pacing table with all these books and leaflets and thing on. Um, people also holding up the old stand up to racism signs. And I thought, oh, well, I know where we're going here. And like other oh, signs as well, with like socialist worker. Um, so taking a look at the table at uh, the um the material there the literature i was absolutely horrified and it actually showed my worst suspicions um as you've seen from the the video there was karl marx there and um, there's there was things like about the far right and things like that and fascism and i just thought oh here we go it was absolutely disgraceful it really was right so you um you actually questioned them as well. I see in a video, which is great. Uh, well, you know, and you were saying, you know, what's Karl Marx got to do with, with black lives? Mm. Uh, perfectly legitimate question, um, which is which is a question that, um, yeah, it's quite, it's quite interesting, isn't it, actually? Um, then I noticed the police come over. See, so you're having a bit of a discussion. It's not, it's not very heated. Um, no. They are calling you racist or whatever. I was, you mm. know, it's just... Um, Know, a, a term used by lefties isn't it to discredit people but you know yeah i see the police come over and straight about without even interacting with you no we see on the footage so um before the policeman come over and got heavy yeah. hand was there any interaction between you two before as he said to you move along Oh. Well, that that was it. I mean, we we just, myself and the camera lady were there filming the event. We we respected it peacefully, you know. It was their event, and we went there. We heard all the speeches, all the rest of it. Um, and then after the speech, when the event was over, um, well, just for fire this, they got everyone to kneel down. And of course, um, there was no way that I was going to do that. That was, you know, there's no way I was going to be a cuck watching this. But um, the the um, the one of the speakers said after, right, you know, we're all gonna get ready for the marching, but make your way over to the table so you can start reading the literature and all the rest of it. So basically, trying to indoctrinate him, I suppose. Um, then what I noticed getting closer, we well, couldn't see immediately because obviously everyone's wearing their face masks. But um, it, once again, it was the local labour activists, wasn't it? The same old faces that turn up to all these different events like the refugee rally that we saw two years ago. Um, we had the Labour candidate for North Swindon, Kate Linegar there and her family. Um, she was in the close proximity. I went over um, to speak to some some young ladies. They, they'd obviously spent a lot of time making these signs up, um, you know. So I thought, well, let's go over there and we can start speaking to them. And maybe for my documentary, we can get some answers. Um, so as I approached them straight away, they recognised me um and um but then you know there was it was good humored we'd have you know a bit of banter um and i was just starting to ask him questions um next thing i know probably about 
you know, 30 seconds later, literally that quickly, a policeman comes out from absolutely nowhere and starts pushing me backwards. And like, it just, I was so shocked by it because like nothing had happened before. There was no, um, no um, bad behavior or anything like that. It was literally just asking questions. So I was quite shocked by that. Um, but I guess, well, maybe they didn't want any potential trouble, which was one thing. So I went back to one area um, and then so we carried on filming um, and then I was speaking about like I could see things like the black power fist sign and things like that. The next thing I know, another copper without warning, it's, you know, jumped straight in and starts whack, pushing me back like this sort of thing, you know, push, push, push. And um, I was just totally caught off guard. I wouldn't expect to know at all. There was no warning or nothing. It just come out completely out the blue. And I was really shocked by it. And the other thing as well, you know, they're supposed to be preaching about, oh, wear face masks and gloves and all that. There was none of that on him. He could well have infected me with COVID by all accounts. Um, and I was just utterly shocked, basically. Well, from the footage I see, I mean, you know, it, it obviously, like you said, there's no communication previously, no warnings or whatever. And it's just gone straight in heavy handed, you know, and move you. It, was, it certainly wasn't reasonable. It wasn't justified. And it definitely wasn't necessary from what I've seen. Um, you know, it's a shame the police don't act, you know, in a, this, this, this heavy handed when people are, you know, vandalizing statues mm. and tearing them down. Um, exactly. Instead, a bloke like yourself who's just asking questions that people just want to know answers yeah. to. Um, you know, you get pushed around. Exactly. Um, you, we got you, made a you, you, you made a complaint to the police. I have. Well, um, you, you may have seen the video. Um, I mean, um, I sat back after that, um, still in quite shock and a bit shaken up from it all, to be honest. Um, but what happened after we watched their their little protest go off to the town centre? I mean, there's probably about 50 people there maximum. There was no appetite for it whatsoever. There wasn't, um, and it wasn't very diverse either, should I yeah, say. Yeah, I was just going to say that, Martin. Was it? Was it? Was there many black people there? From what I see on, on the video footage, I, I heard possibly someone who was speaking, mm. um, now that their voice may have been black, but I, I couldn't really see anybody there that, that was. Was, it, was there many black people there? Um, there couldn't have been many. The vast majority are white, um, white um, college age and and I'd say a lots of and a few and a handful of Karens thrown in as well. These social justice warriors. That's all there was there. But then after one sweet Well, exactly. You know, and, and the funny thing was actually I could hear him talking about university and stuff, because I had an email from university about it. There you go. It's just more evidence. I've probably got that on one of my um, um lengths of film as well, actually. I should have probably included that. Definitely. But anyway, so once they went off to town to you know um make their point, they went up. I thought, well, you know, I was really shocked about what happened. And so I went up back up after to see the policeman, as you've seen the footage, and I let him know exactly why I was absolutely disgusted with his behaviour. Absolutely, totally unnecessary behaviour. And I myself, um, as I mentioned before, I served the Wiltshire Constabulary, and there's no way I would have ever treated anyone like that. You always treat people with respect. But he was completely unprofessional, and it wouldn't surprise me if he had a political agenda, to be quite honest. And he needs to be held accountable for this because, you know, that is common assault. You can't let him get away with this. You know, the bloke was twice the size of me. You know, I'm not a big bloke at all, as people know. Yeah, he was definitely he was definitely taking liberties, wasn't he? Um, oh. She's my phone. I'll put this on silent. So I'm in a I'm in a WhatsApp group at the moment and um, people are talking about what's been going on. <laughs> so, oh. But mm. do you know, do you know what? Hopefully, you'll hear back from them. Um, we, yes. You, the, 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 you did hear back from them, that's right. And that you also yes. contacted your local MP about it as well. And he yeah. contacted. And um, I must say, actually, Wiltshire's police have been absolutely brilliant. Actually, um, I made the complaint and to the um, the independent um, police complaints office. Um, um, the Wiltshire Police got back to me. And the Wiltshire Crime Commissioner as well. They were they were very upset um, by what happened. Um, and so my my MP is actually in the cabinet um, as the Justice Secretary. So I couldn't ask for a, a better MP to represent me at the moment. But he um, apparently cracked the whip to get things moving. Um, and they they've referred it now as a serious incident, um, and it's being looked into. 
And I was actually um, very pleased when I asked um, for the body cam footage as well. Um, the World Trigger Savory, they're turning it around as soon as possible. So we're going to hopefully be video soon with the actual the police camera footage of what happened. You know, so there be it can be totally undisputed. You know, we can't let them get away with this sort of behaviour. We've seen how the police have bullied our vets around in London. We're not having it in our own town as well. It's disgusting. So we've got to make an example of these sort of people. They're just bullies in uniform. Well, good on you, Martin. And, um, you know, good best of luck with that. And, um, yeah, like I say, it's a shame to see, you know, you're being treated like that. And, you know, we see people vandalising war memorials and the police just stand by it. Or they don't even stand. They take the knee. Mm. Um, yourself, you ask a couple of questions and you're getting pushed and shoved across the bloody high street. Mm. To liberty. I think the geezer needs to, um, you know, be sent on a conflict management and physical intervention course. Um, he, he, he was uh, well, well out of his, his uh, remit there, I believe. You know, he, exactly. he should have at least come over and spoken to you beforehand, you know, and um, say, so, you know, politely ask you to move along. Um, I just want to touch on Sake House Mine. Have you seen this morning? Well, obviously, you probably have. The, mm. um, the Edward Colson statue, obviously, it was torn down in, in Bristol. And yes. Was with um, Black Lives Matter protests. Um, statue and that was taken down this morning by Bristol Council yes. um, in a statement by Bristol Council they said that the um, the statue was removed because it wasn't um, put up by a due, due course um, mm. they're going to hold the statue in their, in their museum for the artists to come and collect or to donate to Bristol Council's museum <laughs> <laughs> what that piece of junk for? Um, what, what, what do you make of um, this Bristol statue situation? Well, um, Bristol's um, not far from um, where I live, and I visit Bristol quite a lot, actually. It's a, it's a city um, enriched in culture, lovely quayside and things like that. Now, interestingly enough, a few years ago, Bristol actually had a vote whether to keep that Colston statue or not. Um, and I don't know what the actual figures were, but it was, um, they voted to keep it. Um, and that should have been the end of the matter. But what we've seen again, though, is just mob rule come in. You know, the same people who try, try to overturn Brexit, I'd imagine, come in and just take matters into their own hand by destroying that statue. And uh, that's, that's one thing. We saw how weak that the police were. But then for someone to come along and then stick another statue up there, one like um, um, a, um, a black lady doing the black power sign. I mean, isn't that don't do you not think that's a little insensitive and like throwing fuel on a fire? I mean, how on earth is that going to help racial tensions? And we saw yesterday um, um, the scenes down there. There were a lot of, um, again, the youngsters, always the youngsters at, out of college and stuff. They think they're doing the right thing, God bless them. But they, they just really haven't been got a clue. They've been totally indoctrinated. Um, and we saw Brave Patriot down there as well. Um, Joe, a friend of mine, she'd done an absolutely marvellous job. Um, she um, did. Um, um, letting them people know how disgusted we all were. She she was absolutely awesome. So it's Bristol City, the BBC I, as well. <laughs> yeah, it was the BBC though? You can see how they showed it on the news later on, showing all the kids there. They don't show the truth though about all the people walking past, giving them abuse, saying that they want that that's coming down, whatever. So Bristol City Council had no choice. If they didn't take that down, I can tell you now that would have definitely down been down by now probably by um by very angry people who um, have been fed up of um of all this bml nonsense and that's just raising tensions well this character i don't know if it's if it's the the lady herself um jen reed who the um the statue was uh of mm. but it, i'm not too sure if you've seen this video there was a video um i believe it's her i might be wrong um if i am i do apologize but um there was a video put out with uh, calling um, for black people to take up arms and calling for a revolution and yeah. said that um, capitalism is the route to racism. What? Is that um, so? If that's the case, then why are they as capitalist companies and things pumping diversity into everything? You know, that is the most bizarre thing I've ever heard. These people are very, very dangerous. All they're doing is creating racism. They're dragging us back decades. There was no problem before, but they're making a problem that didn't exist. It's, it's disgusting for their own agenda. 
and all they're doing is that they're just breaking up society and um and making people racist you know it, this is the sort of thing that they're doing but they don't care they've got their own agenda but i say well done to bristol city council for taking that down you know very very swiftly well they had no choice but thankfully there was no big debate about this because i could have seen it getting very very ugly actually if it, it stayed up there but they, I believe they took it down at 5.30 in the morning when the snowflakes are still asleep. I mean, they don't really go <laughs> about lunchtime anyway, do they? So yeah, they happened. had all morning to do uh, it. <laughs> uh, anyway, Mike, thanks again for your time. Really appreciate it. And um, good luck with the situation with the police. I do hope um, you get the outcome that you're looking for. Um, yeah. Or at least an apology would be nice, wouldn't it, I suppose? Well, it'd be a start. But, um, you know, I just want to thank you for your support as well. Um, and other people have had hundreds of messages of support through this. And I just want to thank everyone. You know, we're not going to let them get away with this. We've seen how they treated um, um, our vets um, in London. We can't, we've got to make sure this doesn't spread across the country. It's sort of brown shirt behaviour. It's disgusting. Mm. So, yeah, thank you for your support, David. I appreciate it. And also, Martin, just just before we, um, we drop off... Um, there's a petition we're putting together. Um, we'll campaign for the BBC. So speaking of statues, um, the BBC have got behind Black Lives Matter. It seems that they, they, um, they've really, well, they've really got behind Black Lives Matter with removing statues and whatnot and vandalising mm. them, and, you know, and covering their riots as mostly peaceful protests. Mm. Um, I, and they called Winston Churchill statue in Parliament Square in London. They referred to that um, as controversial. So um, the BBC of, said this. Yes, the BBC referred to um, the Churchill statue as controversial. So speaking of controversial statues, there's a statue that you, you brought to my attention. Would you like to tell us a little bit about the statue? Yes. Um, at the London HQ at the BBC um, Centre, there's a, a sculpture out there um, created by the artist Eric Gill. Um, he um the the actual sculpture um you may have seen a picture of it is like a big well sort of an elderly man i suppose with a very young child um with his little winky hanging out and stuff but uh, the, the 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 horrid thing about this this statue and, and this and this guy who um and the sculpture is actually he's a paedophile um he actually had ancestral sex with members of his family and his pet dog but the BBC, as we know, they seem to like him. Did, did you just say his dog? Yes, his dog as well. Yeah, absolutely disgusting. It's all there documented. But, of course, the BBC is still happy to keep his statue up there. You know, they should have learnt their lessons from the likes of Jimmy Savile and Rolf Harris and Gary Glitch and all that. How is this statue not coming down? It's got to come down. It really has to. Well, if they if they're willing to um, you know call the likes of Winston Churchill controversial, um, you know, I think we, it's time we give them a taste of their own medicine. Yes. So um, we've got a petition going, me and Martin, to have uh, this statue removed. So please take the time to to sign it. Um, we're going to get them printed out and, and delivered to the BBC, um, to the HQ, and um, we're going to petition to have this this statue removed. So we'll put a link in uh, with this video as well. So please make sure you take time to fill that out. And um, yeah, when, when we've got enough signatures, we will print that off and go down there, won't we, Martin? Damn right we will. You know, it's time they were taught a lesson. We can't be having this anymore. It's disgusting. Bye, right, Martin. Well, thanks again. And no doubt we'll be speaking again soon. Thank you, David. Take care.